hello beautiful people welcome back to the canada info channel today's video i'll be sharing um, the details of how the whole idea of moving out of um, manitoba started so if you're new to this channel my name is wolo and if this is the first time just give me a thumbs up you know to my old subscribers i want to say thank you and please destroy <laughs> destroy the like button okay so i don't want to waste your time today um i'm thinking this might be a very long video so please stay until the end so that you get all the details i'm not a vlogs person so um <laughs> when people vlog how they move i've i tried to I, I tried to see if I could do something like that, but it wasn't working out for me. So I'm a sit down and talk kind of person, not a vlog, vlogging my life kind of person. Okay, so back to how the journey started. The journey actually started in 2021. Um, in 2021, we were in a small town, which was actually 25 minutes away from Winnipeg. And we moved to that particular community because we actually wanted to help relatives immigrate and get the 50 points that's 50 regional points so that was why we moved and thankfully most of my siblings were able to get their letter of advice to apply from the manitoba government and the application was in process and all of that so i was in that particular small town and then my husband got an offer that took him out to um about eight hours away from Winnipeg. That's eight hours drive away from Winnipeg. It's still the same Manitoba. The province is still Manitoba, but eight hours away from Winnipeg and about eight and a half hours away from where I was. Um, he had to go and he left me behind in that small town because it was closer to Winnipeg, it was closer to my work then. And that was, I think it was in 2021, I also started my immigration consulting business too. So um, I was managing the two at the same time. And thankfully, it was at also at the same time that I also um, got pregnant. So my husband left and went to that particular place. Canada has such a huge landmass. And sometimes I keep asking myself, well, why did the indigenous people concentrate in different different locations that are actually far from each other you know as big as manitoba you still have places that are eight hours away ten hours away 16 hours away in the same manitoba anyway let me not digress from the main gist but just to give you an idea of what it was like so he was eight hours away from where i was and um, i couldn't move until six months later so he was shuttling between where he was to meet me most times during the weekend sometimes maybe once in two weeks or once in three weeks and then he goes back so that was what he was doing until um after six months i was able to get um some leave i had a lot of accumulated leave that was up to two months so i had to gather that leave and um, add it to my maternity leave and I took 18 months maternity leave. So that was how I moved to join him. And then when we were there, there were also signals that he was also going to be moved or get another offer that would make us move again. I got there around August. By November, we were already getting signals that there might be another movement. And this time around, it was between Edmonton and Saskatchewan. That was the signal we were getting. That was as a 2021. So me, I wasn't really bothered because of course I was on maternity leave. I wasn't thinking of anything. I just wanted to have my baby. Okay, so I, I need to mention this. When when I moved to join him, some of our properties were kept in the storage in Winnipeg. So we didn't take all of our properties to where he was uh, because we felt we were gonna come back so we had to put on hold um some of our plans and we were just waiting for the signal to say okay it's time to move now where that town is is a university town the issue with that town is that they have population but they don't have housing so when my husband left earlier he could only get a small space 
that he could manage because I wasn't with him at the time. And then when I had to go join him, we had to start looking for a bigger space, which was um, very difficult to get. And <laughs> there was one time I was I was very upset. I, I went to look for a space, like I went to look for a, a place to rent. And the place they showed me was a two bedroom basement. And they were calling the price of 1,500 Canadian dollars for a two bedroom basement in a remote town. That was as at 20, I think early 2022, there about, yes. And I was so upset, like, I'm not in Ontario, I'm in Manitoba. Why should I be paying 1,500 Canadian dollars for a two-bedroom basement, you know? So I was like, no, no, this is not going to work. And we were going back and forth on, should we buy a property or not? Because we had the signal that we were going to leave, we were in a confused state on if we should go ahead and buy or if we shouldn't buy but it was no longer convenient for me and i felt okay whatever it is i like my comfort a lot and because of that we just had to go ahead and buy not minding if the signals we were getting would come immediately i just felt i mean whatever let's just be comfortable for the time being because housing in that area is very scarce so when the government is actually shouting now that housing is scarce we actually started seeing this as far back as 2022 about housing and for me the surprising thing was in that particular location as small as that location is with just few people about nine thousand or eight thousand people there was housing scarcity um and i was wondering why so that was it so we stayed there and then um in 2022 we, we didn't get the signals anymore that we were moving and then early 2023 the information just came that he was that we would move but this time around my husband was to move first that was around march he left around march april i left that town i had to move back to winnipeg to be closer to my siblings at the time and then between April 2023 until December 2023 there was still no clear signal on when I would move to join my husband at the time so we kept getting signals on a monthly basis and at this time um, we had to sell the property in the town where we bought it Unfortunately, we sold the property at a loss. I don't know if you're interested in hearing the gist of how we sold the property at a loss, please leave it in the comment section. Probably you could learn one or two lessons from um, what happened from us selling the property at a loss. So I was back in Winnipeg. I was staying in, a, in one apartment like that. Our items could not, or our properties, most of our properties could not contain that particular flat. So I had to move a lot of things back into storage. And this is us burning money with items in storage. <laughs> this whole journey has just taught me that it's good to just live a minimalistic life. You know, if you're going to be moving from one place to another, if you're going to be a nomadic person, it's better to be a minimalist so that you just don't have too many things scattered here and there. I'm trying to be a minimalist. And at the same time, I also like my comfort. Like I, I like to have everything at my um everything handy so some of our properties were kept in storage and then um december came january came still no signal and then february came no signal then march uh, my husband just called me that we are moving like i mentioned earlier the nature of his job takes him round canada so he was shuttling between quebec new brunswick and nova scotia and when he asked me where would you like to stay i said okay i would like to stay in quebec because i wanted to take advantage of the french language there and polish my french very well but um he said some things that i felt okay maybe quebec might not be good for us so where's the next best place to stay he now said between new brunswick and nova scotia i should choose one uh i said what of alberta <laughs> He said Alberta is not 
included for now let's just choose between nova scotia and new brunswick so i now chose new brunswick so when signal came that um our uh, our house in new brunswick was ready it was time to move and then when i started packing i had to pack the items all the items in the storage that we had kept for the past like three years between 2021 and 2024 everything packed everything because this is an interprovincial move not a not a, what do you call it now not a town or city to city move within the same province from one province to another so we had to gather a lot of things ah this movement just shared told me i just told myself that it's time to be minimalistic no matter even if i like my comfort it's time to be minimalistic uh, it was very stressful that period packing um and then um the movers came they will pack they will pack your things they will look at the things that can move because they're going to be using a truck to move your items there are certain things that cannot move so especially flammable items that like sprays all the sprays anything liquid they cannot move so in the process i also lost a lot of items that i thought i would move with that would move with me um so many like oils a lot of things anything liquid cannot move anything that is in a spray can cannot move things that can cause fire cannot move with the truck so they packed okay so a day before they came to pack i'd already packed but a day before they came to inspect what i had packed and then repacked repacked again and then the next day was the packing day brought the truck packed our items in the truck the government also made provisions for us to stay in an airbnb until our properties arrive in new brunswick so we had the opportunity of staying airbnb in winnipeg for like one week and then we left winnipeg came to um, new brunswick and also stayed in airbnb in new brunswick for one week and then once our property arrived we moved into this house where I am now. So uh, that's just the story of my movement or my journey of moving from Manitoba to New Brunswick. It is not me um, that planned it. It's because of the nature of my husband's work. Uh, it takes him around and it will still take us around more often which is why we moved from Manitoba to New Brunswick. So it's been, how would I put it? It's been, I feel like I'm still a new immigrant. Probably I will share my journey in New Brunswick, uh, my experiences. Like a lot of things I'm just seeing here and I'm like, oh God. Okay, anyway, it's too early for me to, I don't, if you know me, I don't like complaining. I like solutions. I like to be happy. Long and short of it, this is my story of how I moved from Manitoba to New Brunswick and when I was in Manitoba we moved like six times six times within Manitoba Winnipeg some communities outside Winnipeg before we now went to the very last the very last community that was like eight hours away you know before we came here so that's my story Thank you so much for watching. Hope I didn't waste too much of your time. I have a boring life. <laughs> so I just said, let me share this story um, about our movement. It's just so straightforward. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.